Well, hello and welcome. My name is Amber Anderson Scrabic, and we are here at the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Manitoba. And I am joined by the one and the only Cormac Foster. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Cormac is, of course, uh, a bit of a media darling now after having been on The Amazing Race Canada. Uh, but we already knew you were special because you were an engineering student. Oh, uh, definitely. Exactly. Great. First of all, welcome back to Winnipeg and welcome back to the U of M. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to be back at home now after the whole whirlwind of media and everything that took place. I'm back at home. Is it surreal to be back on campus and, and looking at classrooms again after what you guys have experienced? Yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit strange. Like it's, oh, this is back to like the norm, back to reality. It's not like jet setting around the world anymore. It's like, <laughs> this is now back to my studies and whatnot, which I enjoy, mm -hmm. so. So what's it been like since you've been off the race, since you guys finished? Um, it's, it's been pretty wild. Like when we were first announced, there was such a big outpouring of support from Winnipeg oh, as a yes. whole. It was crazy. Yeah. And then with, of course, our tragic elimination. <laughs> and like we were doing so well in the race. Yes. And then that elimination, just the way we went out, the response from Canada has been unbelievable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you guys are definitely social media darlings. Um, and I think it is because not only how you went out, but also how you guys ran the race. I mean, you guys, uh, I think everyone was cheering for you because you ran it so well. You're obviously very competitive, yes. um, but uh, you, you, you treated other competitors uh, very well. Uh, you were very gracious with each other. Was that something that, that you consciously discussed ahead of time? This is how we're gonna do, it, do this? Or is that just who you are? Well, you know, we, we thought a little bit ahead of time about, you know, like, this is going to be on national television, mm -hmm. so how are we going to look? But we didn't really worry about that because we figured we'd be ourselves, be who we are naturally, and that would come across. And it, it truly did capture us. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. Yeah. So I have to know, how does a mother and son from Winnipeg even get the idea to try out for Amazing Race Canada? Like, how does that even tweak in your mind? Well, you know, honestly, my mom and I, we've been fans from the very beginning, when okay. the show first started. Mm -hmm. So when I was seven years old, it started in the States, and we've watched basically every season together, <laughs> and we've always dreamed of being on the show. Okay. So when it first came to Canada last season, and Tim and Tim, of course, got on, and they won the show, um, we said, okay, we're applying, definitely, but I was too young. Oh, okay. So this year we said, okay, we're applying and we're in. We know we're in. So <laughs> Very confident. I yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. So what was the process? Oh, it was a complicated process. Mm -hmm. It was a few month audition process. You send in a tape, mm -hmm. um, just kind of explaining your relationship, the dynamic and why you want to be on the show. And so we did that and then you go through all the steps and eventually they tell you you're in. Mm -hmm. so. Now you're doing all of this while being an engineering yes, student, this is which, true. which anyone who's ever studied engineering knows is a full-time job. Yes, that's very true. How are you managing to multitask this? You know, it was a little bit tough. Like actually, like some of my friends, you know, you could ask them and it, this all had to be kept a secret. Mm -hmm. No one was to know. And so I would find certain spots on campus to fill out these 30 page applications at different times. <laughs> and I'd be filling these out secretly and like have notes covering and like math notes covering them up and be like, okay, like working on the application process. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it was, it was a time commitment for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to balance that. Yeah. So what were the challenges once you knew you were going to be running the race? Because there must have been some timing conflicts yeah. with classes. Yeah, you know, there were. Because when we ran the race, I actually had to move some of my exams mm -hmm. because I was in my winter term exam period. And so I had to talk with my profs and, you mm -hmm. know, my profs were very gracious. And so I had to get all that moved so I could take the exams prior to running the actual race. So thank you, engineering profs, for yes, being so thank nice you. to Cormac. <laughs> so now you know this is the reason why. It, it wow. was my confidential reason for having to miss exams. This mm -hmm. is why. So wow. Now are you back in classes now or th starting this next week? Yeah, starting in uh, next week, I'll be back at, at university. After Amazing Race Canada, engineering classes might actually seem easy now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it it's definitely puts a perspective on things. Life is not, like, it's, it's fairly easy compared to what goes on in the race. So. <laughs> what I have to ask you, though, is... Um, you know, we all know that, that engineering is about problem solving and, and, and ad analyzing your situation. How did that background play into your, your a race and, and, and maybe some of the experiences you learned at the race, how you might be able to apply them to your studies now? Well, you know, um, a perfect example, if you look at that chair in Tofino, yes. that chair, the best chair there. I and knew you I, would rock that yeah. competition. <laughs> so, you know, like, I, I just have to put that out there because some of those other chairs I went to, like, 
look at them and they were just on the ground, piles of driftwood. So like that's a good example there. So yeah. thanks to engineering there. Yes. But you know, like just the whole problem solving component that we're taught in engineering, it definitely helps because when you're racing, you're under a time crunch and you just have to make decisions mm -hmm. and you have to go with the best possible option, weigh the pros and cons. And you know, that's something that we learn in engineering. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the background definitely helps. So do you have any idea what you want to do with your engineering degree once you're once you're finished here? Or? You know, I'm like I'm in uh, biosystems engineering mm -hmm. and so like I know that like biology and engineering, those two mixed together, that's my passion. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too sure where exactly that will lead. I'm really open to anything. Yeah, well there's certainly lots of options with an engineering degree yes. and I think Amazing Race Canada on the resume is probably yeah. not a bad thing either. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your mom. I mean, we all feel like we know your mom. Uh, yeah. Any of us that are moms, we want to be her. Uh, but tell us what this experience was like for you doing this with your mom. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, it was the best. It was the best experience I've ever had in my life. And I can't imagine doing it with anyone else besides her. And, you know, like prior to going on the race, you know, we spent some time going through the orientation and whatnot. And we just had a lot of time together, just her and I, which mm -hmm. was nice because in the busyness of the world and with school and everything, mm -hmm. it's tough to get that. So. It was amazing, and you know, like everyone always asked, "You're doing this with your mom?" Like the other racers, they're like, "If we did this with our moms, we would like fight, we would kill each other." And and we're like, "No, like we don't, we don't fight. Like we come to decisions unanimously when we were on the race, and like mm -hmm. it worked out great." Yeah, yeah, it was really, it was really fun to watch. Yeah. So, do you know how the race ends, or are you watching? sort of in anticipation with the rest of us now. Yeah, you know, I do know how it ends. Okay, so I, I won't ask. Yeah, I, I, I can't, can't say <laughs> that I'm sworn to secrecy, but I do know how it all results. And I'll just say it's an amazing show. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to keep watching because it's, it's amazing. That It sounds cliche, but that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, oh, that's fabulous. Well, I have to admit, since, uh, since you and your mom left the show. Uh, I have been cheering for Mickey and Pete, oh, yes. uh, partly because they make me laugh so much, but also because they're from my hometown area of Perry Sound, Muskoka, oh, okay. and that's where I'm from. Uh, they've been, of course, uh, hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but there was a little flirtation there with, uh, <laughs> with Mickey yes, and your mom. Was. How are you feeling about that now? You know what? Honestly, <laughs> I'm so used to it. It's happened all my life with my own friends and whatnot. Really? So yeah, like so. Hot mom is not a new thing for no, you to put it's up not. with. No, not. Like all through high school and everything. I, I've just gotten used to it. I've accepted it. I'm not sure how, like I fully enjoy it, but <laughs> she enjoys it. I know that. There so. could be worse things. Yeah, exactly. That's the, so. What's next? Uh, you, going back to classes. Uh, what's next for you and, and and your mom? You're still doing a lot of media. Yeah, you know yeah. we are. Like there there will be the live after the race show, which mm -hmm. will be happening. So we'll be heading back up to Toronto to film that, mm -hmm. um, and that'll air after the finale episode. Um, so we're just the still whirlwind of media and whatnot, and um, after our prize that was given to us from the Yukon. How that, cool is that? That was amazing. So like we'll be heading back to the Yukon. Um, we're not sure when exactly yet, but we'll be going back to maybe try shooting and maybe learn how to shoot. <laughs> so that's probably in there somewhere. I don't think I would have done that one any better than your mom. So there's oh. no shame there. And I, there's no way I would have been able to ride the bike that long. No, so you know no. what, the, some of those, it's interesting. You see some of the people there who are big, strong guys and they mm -hmm. went around twice and they were tired. Yeah. And she went 22 laps. So just the perseverance and the never quit spirit Incredible. is amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Well, that's just one of the reasons why we love you guys so much and how you handled it as well. I don't have a trip to the Yukon for you, but I do have a couple of little gifts for you. So I'll get oh. you to hold this microphone for okay. me. Okay. Gift is for oh, you. Oh, wow. So this is your very own U of M engineering hoodie. Awesome. Thank there you. There you go. And uh, I think it's Oh, it's got the red line on the there back. Sweet. So that's awesome. That's for you. Thank you. And mom. Oh, she's going to like it. I here today, but I think it, I think it applies. Oh, mom awesome. Ever. She's, she's going to love that. <laughs> that's sweet. Thank you so much. And uh, we've, uh, we've put that in this bag for you. Oh, and thank you. I think you guys epitomize uh, what the University of Manitoba is all about. Explorer, adventure, trailblazer. You guys did it all on this race, and you made us Thank very you. proud. You did it with, with incredible enthusiasm, and, uh, and you did it with integrity, and we're really proud of you both for doing that. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here today. Awesome. Thank awesome you for Awesome to me. meet you. Thank you. Thanks.